guys. Welcome to Storytime Sunday. I'm gonna scoot. I'm gonna scoot. There, am I scooted? I'm scooted. Welcome to Storytime Sunday. I can't believe it's Sunday. When did that happen? This seemed like a very short weekend to me. I don't know about you. But to me, it felt like a very short weekend. So tonight, our book is called Imagine That, and it's by Jonathan D. Voss, and it's a hoot and olive story. And I had never heard of hoot and olive before, um, but the artwork was really pretty. So I thought that I would pick it up. I thought this would be good. So we'll give it just a few minutes to make sure that everybody is joining us. I see that Cooper just joined, so that means that Noah and Neva are here. And Noah, I hear that a uh, tooth fairy might be joining you this evening. Somebody lost a tooth today. Not just any tooth, a front tooth. Boy, that's crazy. That's gonna be an interesting time. <laughs> So we will give it just a few minutes as always to make sure that everybody is here. A couple of my friends sitting right over there, Beppy is sitting over there and Harry Dog is sitting over there. beppy has been doing some videos today, so she's kind of chilling. She's very tired. <laughs> so our book tonight is Imagine That. Hi, Neva. Imagine That. A Hoot and Olive Story. Really cute artwork. Really cute. So Hoot is a little owl and Olive is a little girl. And of course, since I don't like dust covers, we'll put that right over here. And this one does not have the same photo on the front as the dust cover. So I did want to show the dust cover just to show what the picture on the front of the book looks like. Give it a few more minutes. Give it a few more minutes. And uh, like last week's book, I have not read this yet, so we're reading it together for the first time. But boy, the artwork in this is pretty. <laughs> Oh, you guys are gonna love the artwork in this. It's so pretty. Hi, Pierre. Hi, Chris. Welcome. We have just a few more minutes. We actually started early at 7.53, so I keep forgetting that I have a clock over there I can look at on my computer. Typically, I have to go in and out on my phone. And we don't have the good camera tonight, but we do have this one, and this one is good enough. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I honestly have no idea what I did yesterday. I don't remember. Oh, I went over town. That's what we did. We went over town and did some errands. And then today, just lots of videos with Beppy. Beppy got to dress up today. She had fun. She played dress up. She got all dolled up and she put eyelashes on and she put a wig on and she put a fancy dress and a fancy necklace on. Hi, Tim. So she had fun dressing up like an adult today. Now she's tired. And pretty soon, you guys on this Facebook page will hear Becky, Be Becky, ah, that's me. We'll hear Beppy talk, cause she's gonna start doing some videos on this Facebook page where she talks and does vlogs, which are video blogs, which are short little videos that talk about things that's, that are on her mind. So that will be coming up very soon very soon five more minutes we started early we started early so i'm stalling 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 <laughs> i 
Noah, did it hurt when your tooth came out? Pierre, Tim, how did you guys have a, did you guys have a good weekend? How was your weekend? Whistling would have worked. For what? Now I have whistle while you work stuck in my head, Pierre. Just whistle while you work. Oh boy, did you swallow it? Is it in your belly? I hope it's not in your belly. Because the tooth fairy is going to have a hard time trying to find your tooth if it's in your belly. <laughs> oh, nice. Serena, I love playing with Tinker Toys. Okay, good. I'm glad it's not in your belly. Because the tooth fairy might have had to wait a little bit of time before she could find it, huh? Yeah. Serena, I'm glad you got to play with your cousin today. That's always fun. Awesome. I'm sure the tooth fairy will be fine with it. I mean, she has so many teeth. If she doesn't physically have one, I'm sure she'll be okay with it. And maybe it'll be like a scavenger hunt for her. Maybe she'll try and go and find it. Two more minutes, 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 two more minutes. Now I feel like Bunny Foo Foo. Little Bunny Foo Foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. Down came the good fairy and she said, Little bunny foo foo, I don't want to see you scooping up the field mice and popping them on the head. One more minute. <gasps> one more minute. How many seconds is one more minute? Do you know? Do you know how many seconds are in a minute? It's a big number. There are 60 seconds in one minute. We have one minute left. Probably a little bit less seconds though, because seconds go quick. Seconds are like tick, 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 tick. That's like a second. Like one 100, two 100, three 100, four 100. So now we're counting down. So there's probably like 40 seconds left, I'm guessing. So let me get this dust cover, dust cover. So this book does have a dust cover. As you know, I'm not the biggest fan of dust covers on books, so I will take it off. However, the dust cover for this has a very pretty picture on it. So you know what this book looks like. So this is what we're reading tonight. Imagine That by Jonathan D. Voss. And it's a hoot and olive story. So you can see there that's hoot, the little owl, 
and olive. So this is our book tonight. And with no further ado, it is 8 p.m. It's time to officially start Storytime Sunday. Okay, so this is what the book looks like. A Hoot and Olive Story. Imagine that. Olive had a great big imagination, which was only a smidge smaller than her huge heart. Her best friend, Hoot, had a heart that was equally as big. His imagination, however, well, one rainy day, Hoot discovered something unexpected. Olive tugged on Hoot's wing. Let's go on a pretend adventure, she said. Rainy days are perfect for that. Hoot agreed. But in the very moment he tried to imagine something magnificent, he imagined nothing at all. I lost it, said Hoot. Lost what? asked Olive. My imagination, he replied, and I can't remember where I had it last. Then he got a more upsetting idea. Or maybe my imagination's broken. I don't think it works like that, said Olive. But if it is broken, we should try to fix it. How? said Hoot. Olive was puzzled. Actually, I don't know how. You just pretend like something is, even though it really isn't. Just then, the rain began to beat harder against the window. I know, she said. What if the water gets higher than just a little and the puddles grow really big? Suddenly, Olive felt the house lurch. cried Olive. Do you feel that? We're floating away. Oh no. Oh no. Look at the mouse. Do you see the mouse? Do you see a bird? But Hoot felt nothing. It's only a puddle, he said, looking out the window. Olive sighed. A puddle isn't a very good adventure. Then she got another idea. It looks like, well, it looks like an antenna, said Hoot. Because it is, said Olive. Your head must be all scrambly. That's why your imagination isn't working. How clever, said Hoot. A head unscrambler. Olive led Hoot into a room full of shadows. She gasped. Do you see that? She said, I in the corner. See what? asked Hoot. The, 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 the giant, Olive whispered. Oh, there's a giant in the corner. Do you see the giant? Do you see the giant in the corner? I mean, he looks like a friendly giant. I hope your imaginations aren't broken. But Hoot saw nothing. Maybe I blinked, 
he said. Or maybe it's worse than I thought, replied Olive. So Olive tried earmuffs. For your leaky ears, she said. How else could your imagination be escaping? I guess that's why they tickle sometimes, said Hoot, following Olive down to the cellar. They stopped, they stepped into the dark. Something fluttered. Olive froze. Do you hear that? She whispered. Fairies. <gasps> they found fairies in the basement? Do you see the fairies? heard nothing. These ear mufflers might keep my insides from coming in outside, he said, but I can't hear anything with them on. So Olive tried something sleepy, then something upside down, and then perhaps one or ten other somethings, but nothing worked. Maybe I can't be fixed, said Hoot, or Maybe you're not really trying, said Olive. See, she tried something sleepy and she tried something upside down. It was quiet for a long while. Poor Hoot. Finally, in a small voice, Hoot spoke. Why is it when my imagination is a thing that's broken? It's my heart that hurts the most. That's it, shouted Olive. She had forgotten the most important part. You have to imagine with this. Said, she said, placing her hand over Hoot's heart. Should I try again? Asked Hoot. You should always try again, said Olive. Hoot closed his eyes. Do you think this is going to work? I see something, said Hoot, but it's so small. That's how everything starts, replied Olive. If you want it to grow, you have to love it. So Hoot imagined again with his whole huge heart. shouted Olive. Of course I did, said Hoot. But that was only the beginning. Look how big he made everything grow. When the clouds broke and the world sparkled in the sun, Hoot and Olive's imagination spilled onto everything. They sailed to far off places and saw magnificent things. They built castles and tamed dragons. They were heroes and kings. That 
day, they played till their laughs finally turned to tired giggles. Thank you, said Hoot. For what? asked Olive. For showing me the most important part, said Hoot. What should we imagine tomorrow? We could be pirates searching for treasure. That's an extra good idea, said Hoot. Do you think we'll be friends? Do you think we could also imagine being friends forever? And they did. They imagined it all and so much more. both of them together. Look at all those beautiful flowers and the sails. And they did it together. The end. That was a nice book. Did you guys like that book? I thought that was a very nice book. So if you joined us late, that book was Imagine That. A Hoot and Olive Story by Jonathan D. Voss. And let me put this back on and I'll show you what the cover looks like in case you would like to buy it from your local bookseller. There you go. So this was the book we just read. Imagine that. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I thought that was adorable. Super cute book. So thank you for joining me for Storytime Sunday. I will see you next Sunday. We have one more book in this month's pack and then I get to go to our local bookseller, Briar Patch Books on Central Street in Bangor to go pick out the next four books. And if you have a suggestion of a book that you would like to read, please have mom or dad, or if you are mom or dad, or aunt or uncle, or whoever you are, Make sure to drop me a line on um, our River Road Productions page, and I would be happy to try to find the book and read it in the future. So um, with that, have a fantastic Sunday. Remember to go to your local bookseller and always, always, always keep being creative. Bye, guys. I'll see you next Sunday.